What's up guys, GPS and FM Motorsports here and welcome to Wheel Spin. This is gonna be my first um my first contribution to uh GT channel uh GT channel car dot video dot network and uh this is going to be a series where I basically test cars and do all sorts of stuff with them. But anyway, so yeah, the first episode of this series and we have the curious case of the Mazda 787B on racing soft tires. Now this is a bit of a strange thing because this challenge started out as a sort of uh, you know uh, I, I wanted to see basically <laughs> excuse me I wanted to see basically if I could beat fail races lap time at the number ring of a 5 minute and 50 second lap so, yeah, and by the way, I do apologize if the video is lagging a bit because uh, it's the method I use to record it. It's not all that great. So, anyway, yeah, the 787B on racing soft tires. As you'll see uh, when we take the car to the Nürburgring, it has a strange habit of being extremely twitchy on bumpy tracks and I really can't quite fathom why uh, I, I just I don't know um, so so yeah I it's, it's the strangest thing because this is not a car that is twitchy at all like it can be if you uh, just slam the throttle on uh, uh, but other than that, it's just it it isn't twitchy as a, as a sort of uh, general rule. Uh, so here we are at the Nurburgring. Uh, sorry for the sort of jump there, but uh, so yeah, uh, here we are. Now you'll see the car start twitching uh, pretty damn soon if you keep sort of if you keep your eye out. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, the damn thing never stopped twitching once I got it around the corner. Uh, at this point, the car was just, we, the back end was leaving l left and right and left and right, and there's not really much that I could do about it. I was, within th the first minute of the lap, I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to stop this car. So I just had to ride it out for the rest of the lap. Coming up to Ehrenberg, and we get a little bit of air there. That's, also, that's always very nice when you're going about 180 miles an hour. And surprisingly, that didn't really excite the whole twitchiness sort of thing quite as much as I thought it might have. And, uh, well, going, going into... I forget the name of this corner. Uh... Actually, at corner back there is float plot, so my bad. But going into the foxhole, get a little bit of uh, of off track sort of rally cross action in my Mazda 787B. Uh, it's all good though. It's all good. Now this is a tricky freaking corner here, the, the the top of the foxhole because there's a bump there. And it's not a bump. It's actually sort of a dip. If you're going too fast, well, first of all, uh, there's a kind of curb that must be four inches high and you go into that corner doing at least uh, well going into the braking zone you're doing over 200 miles an hour by the time you actually hit the apex you're maybe doing 110 115 in this car so you've got that to contend with because that curb will kick you up onto two wheels inevitably and then you've got the the actual bump that your right side wheels run over and oh lord with the with the tires on this car and it's and it's just weird habit of freaking jumping uh not jumping but sort of uh weaving all over the place uh extremely extremely scary for the entire section there and uh i believe we're actually pretty close to one of the really, really fast sections now. Uh, in fact, yeah, we're coming onto the corner, and good lord was the car twitchy there. You got to see a little bit of that action com uh, coming out of that corner with that uh, excellent camera angle. 
uh, yeah, uh, this is an extremely fast part of the track, but it's also extremely bumpy. And if there's not, if there's something that this car does not like on <laughs> on uh, this track, it's bumps. Or on these tires, it's bumps. And so basically, on the on the Nurburgring, you're bumping through the entire damn lap, <laughs> almost. It is really, really, really ridiculous. It's absolutely terrifying. Surprisingly, though, it held Carousel pretty dang well. I don't know... I, I think I know why. It's because uh, there's sort of a threshold with the rear end of this car. Where, you know, while it does weave around a lot, there's a threshold where it stops weaving around. Like, it reaches a certain degree of weave, and unless you do something really stupid, it just stops, it just locks there. Uh, dang. Uh, spazzy capture, I think, maybe. I don't know, it could be my preview window in Vegas. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at all. <laughs> but... So yeah, this is absolutely the most terrifying section of track I think I've ever driven in a video game. Because, oh, the bumps and the corners and just the weight going everywhere. And with the rear end on this car just going all 11 different directions at once. It's absolutely freaking incredibly insane through there and Good lord, this section of track in particular. So many bumps. The freaking front end. Actually, I think it may have come up off the ground there at a point. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can uh, fathom exactly how scary that was. Because the front's up in the air and the weight is going between the rear wheels. Like, yeah. And... There's no way at all you can control the car if you hit the bump at, uh, before that sort of fast left-right uh, wrong. So you have to get your approach absolutely dead perfect, especially with soft tires like uh, on this car. So yeah, just absolutely incredibly terrifying. Uh, that long straight back there, just the, the only bit of rest that you can get during this insane lap. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely terrifying. So that is that lap. If you're wondering about the time, 547.2, I believe it was. So then, so then we move on to Le Mans, and this is where things get a little bit interesting, because I thoroughly expected the car to not behave at all around Le Mans, because while it is fairly smooth, there are a lot of corners. I mean, a lot. And most of them are strung together in such insane ways that the weight is just going to go absolutely everywhere. But surprisingly, it didn't. The weight, the car stayed put. The rear end, I have no, I have absolutely no idea how or why. But the rear end stayed absolutely dead still pretty much through this entire lap. Now, uh, we're coming up to Tet Rouge. And this corner has some freaking problems usually. But here, not so much. It, not so much at all. Like, I, I just get through Tet Rouge absolutely perfectly. And I went to the Mulsanne. And I thought, okay, surely the white's going to go absolutely nuts. The rear end is going to step out. I'm going to be screwed for these chicanes. But, again, absolutely not. Absolutely dead stone still rear end from that car. It's insanely stable on this course. And, and j given that I just done the Nordschleife and the rear end would not stop moving even on the calmest parts of the track, it was absolutely strange. It was 
a weird sort of thing. It was a weird sort of experience because I thought for sure I was going to stuff this car on the Mulsanne on, you know, on, you know, on one of the chicanes. Didn't. And if there's going to be one place I'm going to stuff it, it's going to be here. Nope. I do make it through. Uh, again, I can't say it enough. Absolutely stone still. The car did not move. It just sort of complied. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words with the car's performance at this track. I really am. I have no idea why it performs this way, but I do have a bit of a big moment here as I misjudge the width of the car. And I just sort of go off. Barely catch it. I mean, that's as close as you can get to uh, to wreck and, and, and not wreck. It was incredibly close. But I, I pulled through. Uh, whether it's because of the tires, the extremely soft tires, or, you know, whether it's because of just the insane natural grip of the car... You know, you be the judge. But, Porsche Curves. Uh, yeah. The, the car handles so good through these corners. It's not even... It's not... It's not... I can't explain it. It's just... I even leave a little bit of a tread mark from my left front wheel going around that right-hander because the car grips so much they'll actually smoke a tire before it gives up grip. And that's absolutely insane, but, uh, you know, I, I, I thought that there was maybe just a, a, a couple of tenths left in that lap, so I went for another one, uh, and that lap, by the way, was a one, was a 3.23, yeah, uh, so I went for another lap, and, uh, just tried to eke out a bit more performance, uh, tried to, uh, well, attack a little bit harder than I had been, that and uh, hopefully not have the problem with my brakes locking up on the main straight like I had the previous lap. So again, so I do get a little bit sideways there. I think it was a little bit overzealous on the exit of a corner or something. But hey, while this car does have insanely high limit for you know for punishment, there is still a limit. So I just sort of stepped over the limit uh, a little bit. And uh, coming up to the chicanes now. And uh, I, uh, I, I back off my, uh, my uh, entry point so that, that way I can afford to apply the throttle a little bit, uh, a little bit more smoothly. And I also uh, try to shoot the chicane a little bit straighter. And as a result, I gain another... I think it was two, uh, tenth, maybe, there. And the same for this chicane. I try to make everything a little bit smoother, a little bit better, but in the end, it just doesn't work, and I actually lose the tenth that I gained, which is a little bit strange. So, yeah. Uh, going down the Mulsan again, nothing really much to mention here. It's basically the same sort of scenario. Wide exit into, uh, what do they call that, Bentley? Yeah, Bentley. Wide exit into Bentley, smooth on the throttle. I actually lose the tenth because I am a little bit too cautious. I can be very cautious at times when I'm not being absolutely reckless. Uh, again, uh, who who can't really say that? So, anyway, uh, down through Indy, and this is where I almost lost control last lap. Make damn sure not to do it this time. And while I do gain again about a tenth, uh, about a tenth it's not as much as I, as I was expecting. I was expecting maybe three or four tenths to be gained there. I have no idea how uh, I didn't gain more. But... Uh, you know, because the last time I went through that corner, the car was dead sideways, uh, pretty much. I just, by the, just by the skin of my teeth, managed to bring it back. Uh, and I, I'm, I don't know how I didn't gain more time there. But 
anyway, going through the final chicane, just a nip and a tuck and a nip and a tuck and we are across the line. So yeah, those are my experiences with the Mazda 787B at the Nürburgring and subsequently at uh, at uh, Le Mans. It's a real case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, this one. I can't, for the life of me, figure out why the car would be so different on two uh, on on two tracks that sometimes in some sections share a little, you know, a little bit of uh, of commonality between them. I mean, at the at the Nurburgring, you've got, you know, at, at the Nurburgring and at at Le Mans both, you've got. Uh, a lot of fast flowing sections, and I guess it's just the amount of bumpiness at the Nurburgring that really put the 787B's rear end off and made it weave a little bit more than it usually would. I don't know. I don't know what to say about this one. It's a very strange case indeed. But regardless, uh, if you're looking for a thrill, go and by all means. Get the 787B and put it on the Nurburgring on racing soft tires. It's absolutely terrifying because of the speed you're carrying and because of, you know, all of the grip and the rear end again just going every which way. You can fathom it going. It's absolutely scary and exciting. And, uh, yeah, I did, uh, by the way, beat... Phil Race's lap time at the Nurburgring, in case I didn't mention that already. I can't remember if I have. Uh, Phil Race did a 5.50. I did a 5.47. Uh, so, yeah. But there are obviously differences between Gran Turismo and Forza. I think he was running harder tires on Forza, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, also, I don't think... Uh, I, I don't think more, uh, Forza... Uh, models the different dips and bumps and jumps in the Nürburgring surface quite as much because uh, I've never played Forza extensively but just looking it back uh, you know looking at Phil Race's video it doesn't seem like there like there's that wicked dip in that uh, corner coming out of the foxhole so yeah I don't know they're very different uh you know, there are very different scenarios and things and stuff in each in each game. Wonder wonder what I could do uh, with the softest tires in Forza. You know, as far as lap times at the Nurburgring and in the Mazda 787B, because you know it's supposed to be a more unrealistic, more sort of arcadey game. So I don't know. Uh, either way, if you like this video, then go ahead and bitch like that like button. Uh, if you really, really liked it and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hey, I've been GP. You've been awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video. GP75, out.